Hi, this is David Valade with Alta Vista Technology. Today we're going to do a little video talking about multi-currency and a fancy module called Global Consolidations, all within Sage Intact. Uh, since this video is going to be hosted on YouTube, we're going to do the fancy little thing where there are some chapter marks so you can jump around. So if you are interested in one feature over the other, have at it. All right, we're going to start with a couple basics. So I have a company here, and as we do an intact, we can have this top level where we can look down at all of our companies, and you can see they're named as countries. And I even have a dashboard here that says Global View. Isn't that great? Love the dashboards where I can look across all my legal entities and all their currencies, and that's good, good fun. We'll get there, though. Let's talk about something basic, I think. So let me go into Accounts Payable, and I'm going to enter in a bill to show some of the features around multi-currency. I'm going to pick a date, maybe the last month as I'm recording this. I put May 1st, and let me pick a vendor here. I think I'm going to pick G for global something or other. <laughs> global properties looks great. I'm posting it on the 1st. I could copy my last bill. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the vendor's invoice number there. I'm just making that up. And we'll ignore some tax stuff. We're going to focus on multi-currency, as I said. A little basics here. I can transact in a currency that the vendor is expecting, and I, it will translate into a base currency of whatever company I'm dealing with. So by having it here, I have USD. Uh, this defaulted in because I have this vendor global properties set up to receive payments in US dollars. But let's change that just for another example. I want to say let's pay you in Australian dollars. And that's interesting. When I hit the drop down, you see I have a few different currencies here. You could have as many as you want, to be honest. But what happens is there's a setup step where you, you say which of the currencies you want to expose just to eliminate you know, user error so that you just have the currencies that you care about. You might only have a handful, but these are the ones I have in this environment. I'll pick Australian dollars. Why not? Sounds fun. Here's the first thing that is interesting. So because this is dated May 1st, the exchange date is the same, and this is defaulted in an exchange rate. It already did that for me. It went out and it got that rate from a site or service called Awanda. And it just translated this, so I'm led to believe, if I can do math right, that if I were to pay a dollar Australian to Global Properties, it would be worth 70 cents to me. So that's good. I did want to point this out. Normally, this is perfect. That's the date. That's the rate. Now, I can change that rate if need be. So if I have another rate that's been negotiated for some reason, then I can change it. I can also change this date a little bit. I don't need to in this example, but what, let's watch what happens here. So if on 5-1... This says 7065. There's a trick. I can hit the little calendar or I can type another date. Another trick, though, is on my keyboard, I can hit the little plus symbol and I can change the date here. And as I'm cycling through dates, notice that the rate is changing a little bit. So that means that you don't have to do what I have seen done in other accounting systems where you have to basically go look online and you have to tell the system what the rate ought to be. Uh, we can, again, override it, but we don't have to do that. Just by putting in the date, it knows the rate to exchange from whatever currency that I need to pay my vendor in to whatever my base currency is. I'm focusing on vendors in this example. All of this would be true in reverse if this was a customer also. So if I have a receivable for a customer in one currency and I can translate it to the base currency. Base currency is, you know, every company has a base currency. So you pick what the base is. More on that in a moment. I'm going to come along. Looks like the rent code defaulted in because that was on the vendor. I could override that, but I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to put in a $1,000 Australian. And yep, sure enough, it converted that to, I can see it is what the uh, base amount would be. And I'll pick a department. Why not? And I'll pick a company and I could keep going. I could actually pick multiple companies. That's a topic for another day. If that's all good, I can go ahead and hit post. So that means I can pay that bill according to terms. I will pay my vendor, in this example, in Australian dollars, but it recorded in US dollars in that one company because my USA company has base currency of US dollars. Pretty good, pretty straightforward, makes a lot of sense. I will acknowledge this too. So let's suppose it, it comes to month end and I still haven't paid that vendor yet. Now, as uh, accountants, we know, ah, that's something that is interesting because when we booked that payable in this example, it went ahead and converted it to our base currency, but then the calendar moved forward, exchange rates went every which way, and now at the end of the month, well, the rates might be different. So we haven't paid it yet, so we might actually have to value that differently. 
that is a piece of functionality that's standard in the system. There's this open items revaluation. And I will go ahead and pick the end of the month of the period that I entered that transaction in. I'm basing this on document date, could be whatever. And I'm going to pick my location like so. And let me hit view and let's take a look at all the payables that we have. Interesting. So there we go. So I can see I have a couple payables. Um, there's the one I put in for $1,000 and the change here. And I can see that based on the end of the month of which way the currencies change, there's an unrealized gain or loss. I can see I've been doing transactions in actually quite a few currencies. So I can see there's a loss on these, in some cases, pretty substantial, and then uh, a gain here. So my one gain of, it looks like $7.50 is offset by a loss of $574 and this is in my base currency, I can see that up here. So that means that uh, I have an unrealized loss. Maybe when I go to pay it, things will bounce back the other way, let's hope so. But as a good little accountant, I wanna click my create journal entry and this would book a reversing entry so that I can make my books as accurate as possible at the end of the month and it takes all of a click. Pretty great. There's more we can talk about with multi-currency, but know that it's a super robust module and we can do an awful lot with it. But if you know anything about Intact, you know that it's so powerful for with multi-entities. So I have all these different legal entities that you can see here, Canada, UK, Australia, South Africa. And the question has been posed to me before, like, well, this is all well and good. You, you, Yes, you were able to enter that transaction and translate the currency and book it in the base currency. But what if I want to do financials at the end of the month or year? And I have all these different companies and maybe they all have different base currencies. Well, now what? How am I going to handle that? Well, rest assured we have a way. So there is a module called Global Consolidation. So let me show this just briefly here. Where we'll actually set this up and we'll show a little bit more about this. In this environment, you can see it's the same list that you saw up here. I can see it all my different legal entities like so, but I can see all the different base currencies involved for each of those companies. So I can see like my USA companies. I actually have a holding company also in US dollars. I also have Great Britain pounds. I could have euros. I have Canadian dollars. I have South African rand. I have all sorts of things. So if we have all this, the challenge in accounting is we might have different stakeholders who want to see the information differently. Imagine, for example, what if we had two different owners of the company and one of them wanted to see our consolidated financials in U.S. dollars and somebody else wanted to see all of our consolidated financials in Great British Pounds. That would be a little bit of a trick, right? Actually, it's not that bad. There's a way to handle that. And we're going to set that up right now. So Sage Intact is unique in that it has a multi-ledger, multi-book setup. That might sound daunting. It's actually pretty straightforward and a lot of fun. So what happens is uh, you might know for books that some systems have an accrual book. So you can run your financials and you can pick a book at runtime to say, I want to see my financials using accrual transactions, accrual books. So all my payables that haven't been paid yet and so on. You may also have a cash basis book. So you can see the same information, but stated in, in cash basis. We all know that. Another thing you can do though with Sage Intact is you can add another book. You can add user defined books. And this is so fancy for <laughs> global consolidations. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a, a book, call it whatever we want. We're gonna say, I think I'm gonna do US all, okay? And I'm gonna give that a description here and we're gonna set this whole thing up and watch what happens. So we'll say US all companies, and this is just naming the book there. Uh, there we go, that's great. Does a couple little things here. Uh, I could also have a default budget. Well, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't come here to show that off, but imagine uh, if you had a budget that was in different currencies for different companies, if you wanted to consolidate that in one currency as well. Very good. So I said that this book is called US All. Uh, maybe it should be USD All. Maybe that's a little better. There we go, USD All, better label. And then I get to say, I want to translate all my entities or whatever entities I'm about to pick into a currency. And so I get to pick one of the ones I have already enabled and I'll say US dollars. A few more setups here. I won't, I won't spend too much time on this. There is this thing with uh, CTAs that we can do. Um, so this is an accounting idea here. When we get to do all of our gains and losses and we have intercompanies and all these different things, we need a uh, equity account to run things through for balancing. So I have, I'm using just one account for both of those. You can get even more exotic there if you choose, but I'll, that'll work for me. And that's it for that first tab. 
I'll click to the second tab here and it asks which company would I like to consolidate? So you can actually do groups of companies. I have some customers who have over a hundred different companies and I'll just add them all here for my purposes, but you can pick and choose the ones that you want. And then it says elimination entry, excuse me, it says elimination entity. I've actually set up an entity that's used just for eliminations. So how about that? When we have our balance sheet and we have do to's and do from's, even across currencies, across companies, there's a step where you make an entity that's just for those purposes. So now that we're, ah, that'll work for reporting. So I can have one column on my report that just shows elimination stated in the currency that I defined on the prior step. And we'll enable those intercompanies. And do I have an elimination account here in case we have roundings again? And I'll pick that same account I picked a bit ago. And as far as dimensions I want to consolidate, I'll, I like to include department, but I could pick any of the ones that I need. All right. Not so bad. Uh, and I'll kind of fly through the, the remainder here. So there's this journals idea. So remember, I can have all those different kinds of other books that we can have. So like I can have an ASC 606 book. I can have an ASC 605 book. I can have uh, a, an allocation book. I'll leave it alone, but we can even include other alternate books with this. Again, advanced, but know that that's super powerful. It says accounts to override. So again, if you're thinking like accountants here, you might be thinking, okay, well, when I bought my buildings, uh, I bought those and I bought them and there they are and they're, they're there for ongoing. I don't need to revalue my building at the latest exchange rate. So if you have certain accounts where that is something that you'd want to do, hey, that's great. We can do all that. How about a patent? I think I have a patent account. There we go. So I can say, hey, just use whatever the historical rate was back when I bought it. That'll work for me. Uh, th there's more you could do here. Just know that that's awfully configurable. And then finally, I have to go to my elimination accounts. Well, there's another window here in Sage Intact. I'll just point at it where you defined your do to and do from accounts. And so when I first saw this, I thought, oh, I guess I got to do all that again over here. But no, <laughs> it's all there for me. So the system knows all about that. And you can add other accounts as well. Um, like, for example, it looks like we're using in this environment some suffixes in the accounts. And I can add another account. Like I think I have an account here that doesn't have a suffix. There we go. So if I had other accounts that I wanted to add to the list for whatever reason, I could. Don't have to if I don't have anything to contribute there. But we did it. We just set up a book. So there's going to be a, a, a book here called USD All that is going to hold all of the transactions for all those entities that I'm consolidating all in US dollars because that's what I picked. Although it could be another currency if I choose. And there we go. So let me hit save on that. I think I have a few other books. You can have multiple, right? So I have that one I, we just made now called USD All. And you can see that one's in US dollars. But again, I can have, there's no limit here. I can have as many different consolidating books as I want. And then these are all available to throw into my financial reports. One last thing I'll show here is like, how do I get information into those books? We just define the rules of the game. How do we get information into it? Well, that's what this run consolidation is. Final thing, I have a lot of years here. I'm going to pick my uh, book that I want here. That's the one we just made called, there's no been no consolidations that have happened here. So I can pick, I want to run just, we'll just pick January and I can click consolidate and off we go. And I can hit consolidate now or consolidate offline. Offline means that the system would uh, email me when it's done. So again, if I have a lot of transactions, a lot of entities, a lot of currencies, the, it's, it's only reasonable that the system might take a little bit of time to handle that. So I can not have to wait. I can just let it tell me when it's done. And as if that weren't cool enough, right? So I can come in here and I can click that and be done. Uh, but this is my favorite little feature here, recurrence. So and yes, of course, you can come in here and consolidate every day if you want to do that. Especially if you have like users who are in different time zones who want to see your information as real time as possible even consolidated over all entities. We have a trick for that. There's this recurrence idea. I can create a recurrence and I could say, I want to have this run monthly, weekly, or daily or something like that. So how about I say, I could do daily. I'll do weekly. <laughs> I'd say run one day after the end of the week and recur, just keep on recurring. And I put in, that's my email address here. So it'll, it'll send me an email to tell me that all is well. But that's pretty good, right? Point being like, I, I don't have to click the button, although I sure could, but I, you can let the system just do this automatically and it will take care of it. 
If you ever wondered whether multi-currency could be fun, hopefully we just answered that for you. <laughs> so thanks. If you have any other questions about this module or anything else, please give us a shout over at AltaVista Technology. Thanks again.